Hi all, I'm Jessica from the Hood School of Acting and today we are going to have two advanced students, Diana Frankhauser and Joe Quinn, demonstrate a scene in the Meisner Technique. They are also teachers here at Hood School. Uh, the scene is called The Secret Lives of Losers by Megan Brown. All right, we're going to let them demonstrate and then I'll chat, but before we go, make sure to click the link below for a free class. Thanks. Uh, what are you doing up there? Where were you all night? What are you doing up there? Exacting small amounts of change. <laughs> what? Come up. No, get down. Come on, Alex. W what are you holding? My crayfish. Your what? My crayfish. <laughs> okay, did you get into your brother's stash or no, something? No, I'm totally sober. <laughs> right. Okay, just get off the roof before my mom comes home, please. She went to work an hour ago. Come up. I... I, I have the baby. So? Neely, it's fucking 9 a.m. I'm exhausted. And I'm really not in the mood for your bullshit Where right now. Where were you all night? Out! You spent the night with Sylvia, didn't you? It's not your fucking business where I was. <laughs> you slept at her house. Okay, I, I don't even know why I'm having this conversation with because you Because right I'm now. seriously beginning to question things, Alex. What? Okay, uh, Neely, please just, just get off the roof. Do you want to be here, like, doing the same shit forever? No, no, what? Neely, just, I'm not in the mood for a fucking psycho freak Seriously? out right now, I'm okay? getting all existential Actually, on your ass. What? Go with me here. Existential, philosophical, don't you read? The TV guide. Jesus Christ. And, and Sports See, Illustrated. See, this is what and I mean by you don't even attempt to- From the dude from Star Trek about babies. Dr. Spock? Yeah, that Jesus one. Christ, Alex. So what the fuck are you getting at then? <sighs> What's the one thing you want more than anything? Uh, Jessica. Oh, well that's retarded, especially since you're spending the night with Sylvia. Okay, you know what, I'm not okay, getting- Okay, fine. What's your favorite thing in the whole world? I don't know. That's not an answer. Okay, then fuck, what's yours? Rain. Rain? <sighs> not just any kind of rain. Rain, <sighs> when there's a thunderstorm, but you can see it coming, like you can see it raining like a mile away on the freeway, like you're, you're, like you're in your car driving. Man, what the fuck is even going on with you right now? How long have we known each other? Neely, I'm really not in the mood for a fucking trip down memory lane, okay? We've known each other since we were in second okay. grade. We've spent every day together since we were seven. <laughs> you were at the hospital the day that my dad died. I was at your house when Jessica dumped okay, you Okay, what Sophie. are you getting at? You slept at my house for three weeks when my mom bailed. Neely, I'm really just not in the I mood. I lost my You're job yesterday and I tried to call you and you didn't answer, so I came by and I stayed here all night and I waited for you. Okay, I've been busy, right? I have a kid. That's not the point. So what is the fucking point? The point is... The point is, is that I always thought that we would... We would what? We would... Okay, Neely, just... Stop. The, the, the Mary Lisa, I stop. thought that there'd be a need. Okay, I have a kid. But we could still. Neely, just get off the roof, please. Alex, you've never even attempted to visit Jessica at Northwestern. Do you even love Sophie? She's my kid. But you don't, do you? Shut up. You don't think she's yours. I said shut up. But she's always in her car seat. You never play with you know, her. You're not with us every second of but every fucking day. But you don't, do you? Since when have you been so concerned with Sophie's welfare? I'm not, but you're using her as an excuse. Oh, oh I'm using her as an excuse? Well, what about your mom? Huh? I, she's a I'm, pretty fucking big excuse for you. At least I can't admit I hate my mother. I hate my mother. <laughs> she's not that hard. Really, what the fuck is wrong with you besides being totally fucking bizarre Give right now? Give her up. Who? Jessica, give her up. Give up Sophie. Give up everything you're using as an excuse. No, no, she's coming here later today. No, I she's told not. you that. Yes, Don't she you is. see that? God, you are such a fucking bitch. And even if she didn't finally fucking come and visit, it's not like it wasn't in your head yes, that maybe. It will be. She doesn't want to be here, Alex. And she would hate you, and she would hate Sophie. Shut up. Deep down inside, you know that, Alex. That as long as you bear that burden, you never have to confront the fact that Jess is gone for good. It's time for you to move on and be something bigger than a small-time drug dealer who bides his time with idiots like Sylvia Pinkerton. Shut up! I said shut the fuck up! Oh, Jesus Christ. God damn it. God damn it. Now she's gonna be crying all fucking day. You see what you did? You are so fucking selfish. Hey, shh. Hey, come on. Stop crying. Please, please stop crying. Please stop crying. This please. isn't about me anymore. Fuck you. Oh, come on, please. Please stop. Oh, damn it. 
fuck. It's Jessica. Great. Hey. Yeah, that's fine. Tomorrow's perfect. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be here. Okay. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. That was Jessica. She apologized. Neely? Niels? Okay, great. Wow, so what was great about that? You know, it's like I always ask my students after each class, tell me what you thought was good about that scene or that particular exercise. And there was so much greatness in the scene. Um, the emotional life, the way that Diana started, Ah, oh, somewhat impatient but calm, and then throughout the scene, how listening to her partner and believing in the imaginary circumstance, the emotional life just came out due to the circumstances and her partner. What about talking about the doings? When we talk about, you know, basically scene work in the miser technique, we like to break it down by who is the door and who is the activity. This is a really clear example of who's the door and who's the activity. So remember, the door is coming to get something from someone, and the person that's the activity doesn't necessarily want to give it because they're 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 doing something or there's a reason behind why they don't want to give them what they need okay now this scene again is a very good example of that Joe is trying to get his friend off of the balcony or you know the ledge there and Diana will not do that and and it's not just that she won't do it there's a reason the why we talk about all the time you have to know your why in the script her why is very deep to her this is her last chance to basically tell him leave your your girlfriend who doesn't really care about you and he thinks she does, leave the, the mother of your child and come with me. We've been friends forever and, and we belong together. And you can see her desperation, right? You can see that strong doing, whereas she's basically trying to convince him, leave, leave her, come to me. And Joe cares about her enough, so he wants to kind of get her down because of his concern, but he has no intention of leaving. And that's the scene, right? There's a strong doing. You see them work off each other. You see that pinch and ouch. You see them really listen and respond, and they're very connected to each other. When they're talking, they are there, listening, trying to hear the tone and reacting like we do in everyday life. It's so important to really listen to your partner. Um, and they did a great job, and their emotional life was phenomenal in it as well. Um, so thanks for watching. I enjoy I enjoyed watching them as well, and I enjoy having you here. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks